Did you know that there are over 4.2 trillion different patterns of spinna, making it practically impossible to encounter two of them with the same pattern? Or what about the fact that it is impossible to encounter two shiny Pokemon in the same battle, because for some reason the game will just crash? Well, in this video, I tested six impossible facts to truly see if they are impossible. Ranging from trying to find two Spinna with the same pattern, to burning an unburnable Fire-type Pokemon that is already on fire. Let's see if we make the impossible possible in this video. Let's do this. Fact number one, it is impossible to encounter two Spinda with the same pattern. Okay, so obviously this fact is possible, but with astronomical odds. I wouldn't be surprised out of the millions of Spinna that have been encountered throughout the world, throughout every single Pokemon game, not a single one of them has had the exact same pattern as another Spinda. But according to Pokemon lore itself, Spinna's own destiny states that no two Spinna have the same pattern of spots. So according to Game Freak themselves, the creator of Pokemon, this fact is indeed impossible. But I'm gonna put this to the test. I'm gonna attempt the astronomical odds of encountering two Spinda with the same pattern and see if I can prove Game Freak wrong. And how am I gonna do this, you may ask? Well, I'm gonna use a Pokemon with the ability Cute Charm. If you didn't know, the Cute Charm ability changes the personality value of wild Pokemon in these games, which means that it can influence factors like gender and even shiny odds. But in this case, it will reduce the amount of different pattern Spinda that I can encounter in the game. Therefore, if I do everything right, only 50 different Spinda will spawn while I have a Pokemon with the Cute Charm ability in effect. Which means that I can definitely find the same pattern Spinda with just a little bit of time. So, let's see, let's see if this is possible. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> Alright, I have my Clefable here with the Cute Charm ability, and I changed my TID and my SID to be exactly the same so that now my cute charm glitch is in effect. So therefore, my shiny odds are very, very high right now, and my Spinda pull count is only 50. Only 50 Spinda will spawn right now. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna just go ahead and activate a cheat so that we only encounter Spinda, because that's just, that'll take forever trying to find a swarm and all that jazz. So let me activate the cheat real quick. So Spinda's natural dex is 327. I'm gonna click L here. Um, I'll have it level 25 R and I'll have the first nature, I guess. I'm not really sure what that would be. And now we should be encountering nothing but spinners here. So let's test it out and uh, let's go. All right, there's our spin. Dog. It, yo, it kind of looks like it's ha it has a heart on his head, by the way. It's like literally the anime spinner right there. Um, I, ge I guess I'll use this as my control. I'll have, the, I'll have to catch this guy and see if I can find this exact same Spinda. Um, I won't give you a nickname. You'll be Spinda A though. And okay, if it's, if it's a shiny, I'm gonna count it, okay guys? If it's a shiny version of it, no way. No way, wait, that's actually it. Wait, that's actually the same pattern. This has to be like a world's first. Encounter the same Spinda back to back. Okay. I think when we get in the summary and like shift between them in the party, we can really tell if they're the same or not. Spin number one, spin number two. That's literally, that's literally the same pattern. It's just the shiny, it's a different shiny. That is so crazy. Like what, there's 50 of these and I just encountered the same pattern one back to back like that. What are the odds of that happening? Here, let me encounter a third one real quick to prove that I'm not just getting the same Spinda every time. Okay, I got the same Spinda. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> dude. There's no way I just encountered the same Spinda three times, okay? There's no way. All right, I literally have the same Spinda three times. Okay, maybe this is just a crazy fluke. Maybe I just encountered one out of 50 to the third power, to the fourth power, okay. Something's going on here. Okay, I finally found another different kind of Spinda here. Okay, so I think I literally just encountered the same pattern Spinda like five times in a row. Let me let me do it one more time here. All right, Spinda. Okay, there we go. I, I literally just encountered the same pattern Spinda like five times. That has to be a world's first. I know I have cheats on right now, but I only have it where I'm encountering Spinda. So the spinner can be any pattern. But since I have the cute charm glitch activated because my trainer ID and my hidden ID are exactly the same, this Clefable here is changing the personality value of all wild Pokemon that can be male and female. Therefore, 
my spinda pattern pool is only 50 different kinds of spinda. And I just countered the same one like four times in a row. So I count that as a win. It is possible. No way, that's crazy. <laughs> And there you have it. It is possible in a reasonable amount of time to encounter a St. Peter's Spinda without astronomical odds. This actually might be the world's first St. Peter's Spinda seen on YouTube, like literally. So take that game freak, I just proved y'all wrong. This possible impossible feat is actually possible possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. And before we continue the rest of the impossible facts, this video is sponsored by Nicodorico The Magical World. And Nicodorico is an exciting new platformer game that blends both 2D and 3D gameplay, offering a magical adventure packed with variety. Whether you're jumping through colorful levels, riding on mounts, or battling epic bosses, this game is a love letter to 30 years of platforming classics. And as a big fan of platformers myself, my favorite part about Nicodorico has to be the collectibles. They add a whole new layer of replayability, because when you finish the main adventure and you want to play it again, you can go back and unlock all the hidden treasures and unlockables. And if you're asking me, I love collecting collectibles. That's one of my favorite things to do in games. I'm kind of a dragon hoarder over here. And what's even cooler is that Nicodorico offers couch co-op. You can team up with friends on the same screen and strategize and unlock exclusive in-game rewards together. So if you have a sibling or a friend over that wants to play a game, this is definitely the game for y'all to play co-op with. Plus you can collect and summon adorable mounts. And these animal companions not only help you explore, but also assist in battles with their unique abilities. And you know me, I'm a sucker for cute pocket monsters, so I'm all for these animal companions. Oh, and did I mention the soundtrack? The legendary David Wise, known for his iconic work on Donkey Kong Country 2, composed all the music for this game. So you already know the soundtrack is going to be incredible and awesome. Like, I'm just nostalgic for Donkey Kong Country music myself, so I'm, I'm actually pumped for that. <laughs> so be sure to start your adventure by downloading Nicodorico today. It's linked down below in the description. It just launched last week and is available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of platformers like me. And so if you want to play on awesome mounts and do some platforming and collect a bunch of awesome treasure and collectibles, this is the game for you and also your friend if you have a friend over. And shout out to Nicodrigo the Magical World for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it, guys. Now let's get back into the impossible facts. Fact number two, it is impossible to burn a fire type Pokemon. Sounds pretty obvious, right? I mean, there are several fire type Pokemon out there that literally have fire burning on their bodies. So it would just make no sense for them to be able to get burned, right? Wrong, because, well, apparently this is possible with a very obscure trick, and it's only found in a specific generation, with that generation being generation two. And looking at this trick on paper, it actually makes sense because Fire-type Pokemon are hard-coded in the game to be immune to status conditions caused by moves of the same typing. So if a move like Flamethrower hits a Fire-type Pokemon, they'll be immune to being burned because it's the same typing as Flamethrower. But there is a move that is not a Fire-type and has a chance of burning, with that move being Tri-Attack. Tri-Attack is a normal-type move that has a 20% chance of burning, paralyzing, or freezing the target. So theoretically, with this move, burning a Fire-type Pokemon should be possible. But is it? All right, I'm in Route 28 in Pokemon Crystal and Ponyta and Rapidash's spawn on this route. So see if we can get one and try out this trick. All right, sweet, there we go, Rapidash. All right, apparently there's a trick with the move Try Attack. There is a very slight chance of it burning, even a fire type Pokemon. And we're gonna put that to the test here. Watch we get a first try, that'd be epic. All right. Oh, don't KO it. Oh. All right, we're back, and this time I found a Ponyta, so let's try to uh, let's try to burn this Ponyta with Tri Attack. The only possible burn on a Fire type Pokemon in Pokemon, apparently. Okay, and and a critic. All right, Tri Attack. Come on, get the burn. Let's see if this is possible. Oh, oh. Okay, wait. That was. That was my fire spin, <laughs> okay. All right, Porygon, 20% chance. Let's get the burn. Oh, we got the, fr oh, we got froze there. Dang it, oh, come on, we need the burn. That's still pretty epic though, getting a freeze on a fire type. All right, Porygon, it's time for you to burn this Rapidash with a tri attack, right? Yeah, there we go, okay. So it is possible to burn a fire type Pokemon, but only in this generation. This is the only generation that it's possible in. 
Yeah, so this fact is indeed possible. And funny enough, in the next generation, Game Freak hard coded fire type Pokemon to be immune to burn from any method, not just from moves of the same typing with burn effects, which means that Tri Attack in the later generations after generation three can no longer burn, which actually makes a lot of sense because a fire type Pokemon that has a flame on their body, like Ponyta being burned, what? That makes no sense. So it's good that it was fixed. And fun fact, Steel type Pokemon can be poisoned in this generation too by using a similar trick, but with the move Twin Needle. Since Twin Needle is a bug type move, it can bypass the Steel type usual immunity to poison and therefore giving it a 20% chance of poisoning the Pokemon, which is another pretty funny hindsight that was fixed in the next generation as well. Because how would a Pokemon even poison a Steel type when it has that metallic coating as their body? Plus they have the corrosion ability. But other than that, it makes no sense. Fact number three, it is impossible to gain 96 levels in a single battle. Sounds pretty ridiculous, right? Imagine entering a battle with level one Pokemon and coming out with level 97. Well, according to Bullpedia, this is theoretically possible because in the trivia section of the experience page, it says that theoretically the highest amount of experience that a Pokemon can gain all at once is 573,943 experience. And it even lists the specific conditions that would need to be met to make this happen. And well, here, here are those conditions. One, it would need to take place in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Two, you need to use an outsider foreign level one Pokemon that is in the erratic experience group with max friendship while holding a lucky egg. And if you didn't know, erratic Pokemon need the least amount of experience to level 100. So in this case that I'm about to show you, I use a Swablu because Swablu is a cute Pokemon. Three, you need to have an experience charm in your bag, which is an item that gives you 50% extra experience in a battle. And finally four, you need to knock out two level 100 Blizzy simultaneously in order to have your level one Pokemon to gain 97 levels. So we're going to test this out and see if this is possible. And we had the mod the game so that we can actually knock out two level 100 Blizzies in a single turn because there's no trainer in the game that has just randomly two level 100 Blizzies. And we have our Swab Blue, who's in the erratic experience group. That is foreign. That is an outsider, has a lucky egg and max friendship. So let's see if this is possible. This is going to be crazy. I'm actually excited because I don't think it's like ever been tested before ever. This is like the world's first 97 levels in a Pokemon game at, at, at one time, I think. So here we go. So uh, I, I got a Glade here with uh, False Swipe. So we're going to False Swipe these Blizzies up while we stall with our agility. Agility Swablu here. And uh, ooh, it did a lot of damage. Nice. And yes, we gave the Blizzies Splash because we don't want them attacking us or our level one Swablu. So this is crazy. I, I, I literally think no one has ever done this. So I'm like, I'm excited to be the first. I'm, I'm honored right now. All right, so we have both Blizzies at one HP. And now it's time to sacrifice our Gallade. So uh, let's do that. And uh, we're going to do Swift to knock out both Blizzies with our Swablu and gain a ton of levels. So let's see if this is possible. This is, this is crazy. All right. Thank you for your service, Gallade. But I need you to sacrifice yourself. <laughs> this is so crazy. I, I have no idea what to expect. This is, I mean, I don't know. All right, Blizzy's gonna splash. Other Blizzy's gonna splash as well. And now Swablu should gain 97 levels. Let's see. Okay, Blizzy's down. <laughs> this is so crazy. All right. Blizzy, you Pokemon is gained. 77,000, that's, that's not it. All right, we're gonna try this one more time, but in a single battle, and we're not gonna use Gallade at all. We're only gonna use Swap Blue in this battle because apparently there's a possibility that even fated Pokemon can siphon some of the experience from a battle. So if this fact is true, and if, if it is possible, then that means this Swap Blue should be level 97 at the end of this battle. So let's give it a shot. And uh, I'm giving it the Endeavor set. So we won't be sitting here for hours trying to take down this Blizzy. So, all right, all right, Blizzy's down. So how many levels will we get from this single Blizzy? 40,000, okay. I'm not really sure what level that's gonna take us to. All right, level 30, I, 
I'm not feeling confident at all right now, but uh, we'll take down the other Blizzy and see if we get to 97. <laughs> all right, so Blizzy, the next Blizzy is down. Here we go. 8,000 experience. Okay. Yeah, so this, this fact is impossible. This is not possible. <laughs> okay, so to my surprise, this is actually impossible. I am so bummed to say that. And I'm so bummed to say that because I was so hyped to see the Swablu just grow into a level 97 Pokemon with one attack. Like, that would have been so cool. And honestly, I have no idea why it was impossible because we met all of the conditions and for some reason, we just didn't get that whopping half a million experience that the Bullpedia page said we would. And I even talked to some Bullpedia staff members and they said that it's possible that there's an experience cap in the game, limiting the amount of experience that you can actually get in one battle. So this fact is theoretically possible, but it's actually impossible in the game when you try it out. So overall, this fact is indeed impossible. But there are some other legitimate ways that I know for a fact that's possible to gain a certain amount of experience in a single battle. So maybe we'll try that in a future video. I don't know. Fact number four, it is impossible to encounter two shiny Pokemon and survive. Well, at least in the Sinnoh games. And what I mean by survive is your game not crashing, because since the dawn of the cute charm glitch, there have been rumors that encountering two shiny Pokemon at once can actually soft lock your game. And if you remember, I previously talked about the cute charm glitch earlier with the Spinda, and like I said, using this cute charm glitch in the Sinnoh games, you can manipulate the shiny odds of Pokemon that you encounter, up to like 25% chance of encountering a shiny Pokemon. So it makes sense that these rumors have been around forever now because encountering two shiny Pokemon using this glitch would make this odds very likely actually. Instead of having a one in 67 million chance of encountering two shiny Pokemon, you would have like a one in five chance or something like that. I, I can't do math right now. So we're gonna test it out and see if this is really impossible. And instead of sitting there and shiny hunting for pretty high odds, even with the glitch, we're just gonna straight up cheat. So let's try it out. All right, I'm in front of Eternal Forest and instead of trying to shiny up for a one in 67 million chance of encountering two shiny Pokemon in a double battle, I'm just gonna activate cheats instead. So we're gonna test it out real quick to make sure the, uh, the cheat is activated. We're gonna encounter a wild Pokemon here and see if it's a shiny. So, okay, that, Oh, that is a shiny. Okay, wow, Shellos' shiny actually sucks. Wow, but uh, that was indeed a shiny animation. So I guess, I guess it's shiny. So that means my uh, my cheat code is activated in a hardcore hacker over here. So we're gonna go talk to, to Cheryl here and team up with her and see if this rumor is true. All right, here we go. Let's encounter some Pokemon. Moment of truth. Let's see if it happens. Oh, two shiny Bidoofs, okay, okay. Yep. And. Oh, yeah, it froze. Wow, it actually froze. Okay, so I guess it is impossible to uh, encounter two shiny Pokemon and survive it. If this is only a Pokemon Platinum, by the way, because I actually tried this in Pokemon Diamond and it worked just fine. You know what? I'm gonna try it one more time because maybe that was a fluke. Maybe that was just like the, the Bidoof was just too powerful for us. Let's try this one more time. All right, shiny Cascoon and a shiny Buneri. Okay, it's not the God Bidoof. And, yep, it, it froze again. And we even got like a pink, like overlay for the HP bars there. So I guess this rumor is true. If you are unlucky enough to encounter two shiny Pokemon, then your game's gonna freeze. And that's like major lucky unlucky, so yeah. This is impossible. Okay, well, so the rumors are true. This fact is indeed impossible. There is really no explanation out there on why this happens. Even on Bullpedia, it just says there's like an oversight in the game's coding for some reason. It's just a glitch that causes your game to soft lock when you see two shiny Pokemon, which is actually very lucky unlucky. Because imagine you getting so lucky to encounter two shiny Pokemon and then your game crashing. That would, that would just be awful. And weirdly enough, this crash only seems to happen in Pokemon Platinum. In Diamond and Pearl, the game starts to glitch out visually, because I even tested it out, and uh, it, it seems to be playable still. However, apparently if you encounter the same species of shiny Pokemon, that's when the game will crash. So if I encounter both those Bidoofs there in Diamond and Pearl, 
then apparently the game will crash. Which is honestly even unluckier and even more tragic. Imagine encountering two shiny Pokemon, but they turn out to be the same Pokemon, so it doesn't even matter. And then the game just crashes, so you get no Pokemon at the end of the day. That would just be awful. Fact number five, it is impossible to attain 345,600 Poke Dollars in a single battle. Now, I know in my previous video, I proved that you could technically obtain max money using the Mew and Ditto Payday strategy in a single battle. But that's only possible in generation one. So this all wild and trainer Pokemon have an infinite amount of PP. So for this fact, I'm talking about in the later games, specifically in Pokemon X and Y. And the reason why I bring up X and Y is because according to Bullpedia's trivia section on the prize money page, the highest amount of money that you can obtain in a single battle is 345,600 Poke Dollars, which sounds pretty bizarre and impossible. But theoretically, it is possible by defeating Grand Duchess Diantha at the Battle Chateau while having the Black Rid of Challenge, the Gold Rid of Invitation, the level S, 3, or max prize money O power is in effect. While also using the move Happy Hour in the battle and having a Pokemon that's holding on to the Omnicoin or Luck Incense items. Apparently, with all these prize money buffs combined, this is the highest amount of Poke Dollars that you can obtain in any Pokemon game in a single battle. Well, besides Generation 1, of course. So we're gonna put this to the test and see if this theoretical is possible. And hopefully it is because I'm pretty hyped for this. So let's do this. All right, I'm at the Battle Chateau and I finally found Diantha. It took like 30 minutes of changing the date in this game for her to spawn here, but here she is. We got her in the house. Uh, so now we're gonna activate some perks to maximize the money we're gonna make from her. So we're gonna talk to this lady here. She does address me as the Grand Duke Dobbs, which is another requirement for this uh, fact here. And uh, the first writ we're going to activate is the Gold Writs of Invitation, which uh, basically influence the trainers to pay more money when you beat them. So yeah, we're going to put that down. And I guess I'll give you a tip as well, because I'm about to make it rain anyway, so I'll give you a thousand. That's fine. Um, and the second writs we're going to activate here is going to be the Black Writs of Challenge, which uh, makes the opponent stronger. It gives their Pokemon 20 extra levels, but it also increases the prize of bunny as well. So it's worth it. And uh, now we got to activate an O power. And I'm going to be honest here. I had no idea these things existed, but uh, they do. And so we're going to activate the prize money power S, which just maximizes the amount of money we're going to make from this battle as well. So another another modifier to this. We have eight minutes to utilize it. So we got to do this quickly. And the last thing here, uh, is we have a Pikachu that knows the move Happy Hour, which uh, increases prize money. And we also have uh, Omelet Coin on this, on this Pikachu, which also increases the prize money. So we'll go ahead and jump into it so uh, we don't run out of time for that uh, O power. So here we go. This is crazy because I don't think, I don't think anyone has ever really done this before. Like this might be a first on YouTube like actually getting max amount of prize money in any Pokemon game. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the happy hour move here. Oh, hi, jump kick. Don't kill me off. Oh, okay. Thank God I lived that. Happy hour is now activated. Um, I guess I'll uh, discharge or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, Pikachu's down. Honestly, I'm getting kind of scared that I didn't prepare enough for, with my Pokemon. So here we go. We're gonna rock tomb this Halucha. Boom. Just hit the rock tomb. Okay, thank God. Thank God. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, Gore guys. I think uh, Gark here will be able to handle Gore guys. Let's do uh, let's do an aerial lace because you're a gra oh I'm choice banded. Okay, whatever. Rock tomb. Kaboom. Critical hit. Uh, we're gonna rock. We're gonna rock tomb again. Gore guys is down. Two more Pokemon, and we should get a lot of money from this battle. All right, another rock tomb on this Gudra. I'm gonna just rock tomb you, boom. Take that. All right, here's the last Pokemon. Um, I, I have a feeling Gardevoir is gonna outspeed me, so Gark here. Oh, it's a Mega Gardevoir. I forgot that we're in X and Y right now. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Oof. It's a level 80 Mega Pokemon. That's scary. I still have speed though, yes. Hey, he, okay, there we go, all right. Guard comes through. Let's uh, let's see how much money we make from this uh, this battle. 
I, I did everything that the Bullpedia page said to do. So we should get 345,000 Poke Dollars after this attack. So let, let's see what happens. Let's see if we actually get it here. Okay, Gardevoir is down and you defeated Grand Duchess Diantha. And we gave $345,000, there we go. We did it. That might, that's might be the first time it's ever been done. Okay, so it is possible. This is not impossible. All right, I'm actually glad to report that this fact is indeed possible. Because like I said before, I was pretty bummed out that the 97 level fact didn't work because that would have been so cool. But yes, it is possible to gain 345,600 Poke Dollars in a single battle. And let me tell you, this might be the first time we've ever seen this fact on YouTube because I couldn't find any footage of anyone ever doing this ever. So there you, there you go, guys, world's first. And for the final fact, fact number six, it is impossible to leave Cerulean City under the right conditions. Now this one is pretty simple and also pretty funny. Apparently you can get stuck in Cerulean City with a level 43 Graveler. Yes, level 43 Graveler. Because apparently if you release all your Pokemon, waste all of your money, and your Graveler only knows Harden, Defense Curl, Explosion, and Self-Destruct, apparently you will legitimately be stuck in Cerulean City if you save your game. And I'm just gonna let Action speak louder than words here and just try it out without explaining any more of it. Because it just sounds hilarious. So uh, let's see if this is possible and let's give this one a shot. All right, I'm in a new game of Pokemon Red and I'm gonna try to get stuck in Cerulean City to see if this is possible. The first step in this is to capture a Geodude in Mount Moon. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And good thing I'm a speedrunner at this game because uh, if you didn't know, I'm like top 150 in the world right now for the any percent run. So this should be pretty, pretty fast for me. All right, I'm in Pewter City, so let's buy some Pokeballs real quick for Mount Moon. I'm gonna buy, I guess, uh, I'll buy five of them. That should be enough. So let's go ahead and beat Brock and head to Mount Moon. All right, I'm heading to Mount Moon here, and uh, now we gotta encounter a Geodude and capture it. First encounter? Ah, of course it's Zubat. All right, found a Geodude. Let me uh, just capture this bad boy for step one. All right, go Pokeball. Let's capture it. All right, cool. We caught a Geodude. Time for step two. Okay, step two. Level Geodude to 43, evolve into a Graveler, and get rid of all this damaging moves except for self-destruct and explosion. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And uh, I don't wanna like sit here and grind for hours and hours. So I, I put in 35 rare candies, which should get us to 43 for Geodude. So uh, let me do that real quick and continue on with this journey of getting stuck in Cerulean City. All right, I have a Graveler with the moves Harden, Defense Curl, Explosion, and Self-Destruct. So now we gotta make it to Cerulean City and move on to the next step, step three. So let's do that real quick and see if this is possible. All right, step number three, heal at the Pokemon Center, get rid of all your money, and get rid of all of your Pokemon, except for the Graveler. So let's go ahead and heal at the Pokemon Center real quick. Here we go. So now we are stuck here. Every time we, we faint and black out, we're gonna spawn here. All right, sounds good. Next, let's uh, release our, our starter Pokemon, our, our War Turtle that I've bonded with so much. But uh, it needs to be done. Goodbye, War Turtle. I loved you. Goodbye. All right. Well, okay, now, now we have Graveler. There we go. And now he's gonna waste all our money. So let's go ahead and just sell everything and buy stuff back and then sell it again until we just have no money to buy anything with. All right, so now we have $71 and I can't buy anything and I can't sell anything because this Helix Fossil is not sellable here. All right, you know what? I, I remember there's a rare candy right here, but I think that still does nothing for us. I mean, we could sell it. All right, I sold the rare candy, got rid of my money again. So now I think we are officially stuck. So step number uh, four is uh, save the game. Boom. Now we're stuck. Apparently we're stuck. So uh, let's try it. Let's try to escape uh, Cerulean City real quick. We cannot jump back over this ledge. We're stuck. There, th this grass, this is all there is to the, to the west of uh, Cerulean City. And then if we go north towards Nugget Bridge, uh, this is what happens. 
Uh, Blue interferes. He uh, He's like, yo, you're stuck at Cerulean City now. <laughs> so now we can't get any, like, you know, items up there to sell to, like, buy a Pokeball with and catch another Pokemon to grind them up. We're stuck with this Graveler. And when we fight with this Graveler, this is what happens. So since the only moves that we have that can attack is Explosion and Self-Destruct, every time we do that, we KO ourselves and we spawn back in Cerulean City. Uh, let's try to go to the west now. Let's see what happens over the, to the west side. All right, on the west side, uh, this police officer is not letting us in because of Team Rocket uh, meddling around. I mean, if we went to challenge Misty, her gym, our Graveler is just going to explode and take us back to the Pokemon Center. So there really is no escape from this. This is a true softlock, I believe. We are just stuck here. There goes our Graveler. And we're back. Yep. So yeah, it is possible to truly get stuck in Cerulean City under the right conditions. But I don't know if anybody has ever tried grinding their Graveler to 43 and then release all their Pokemon and get rid of all their money, but it's possible. All right, well, it looks like this fact is indeed possible. I can't see any way of escaping this nightmare of being stuck in Cerulean City with your rival continuously challenging you and your only option is to explode. And even if you miss with explosion or self-destruct, your Graveler still gets knocked out. So struggling here isn't an option. So this has to be one of the funniest softlocks in Pokemon. And this impossible fact of being stuck in Cerulean City is actually possible. So there you go. <laughs> and hey, I did another video where I tested fake Pokemon facts. So if you wanna watch that, click right here. And be sure to subscribe.